Welcome to the broadcast, everybody. I thought this was very encouraging news for the state of the monarchy. Very encouraging news for the royal family because we've got three kings on the way and kings can be a little bit more boring than queens, especially when it comes to the sartorial side of things. I mean, how many times can you get excited about a grey suit or whatever it is that men wear these days? You know, kings once upon a time are dripping. Dripping in the diamonds, the bling, the furs, the ermines and all kinds of creations, even the old stiletto heel. These days, as immaculate as they are, and the three kings we've gone on the way are all splendid specimens of what it means to be royal. But when it comes to glamour, not so much. But Prince George, we hear, is a fan of sequins. And as you know, I'm pretty partial to a sequin myself. And it was Craig David at the Platinum Jubilee that was approached by William, we hear. He was approached by William, who said, my son has been charmed and bedazzled by the sequins that you've been wearing on that blue outfit. Absolutely take with me was. So that's given me a great deal of hope for the reign of King George and the fact that it might be a little glittered, which is always going to get my stamp of approval. Now, before we uh, progress, I want to moan just for a couple of minutes about YouTube as you may have noticed in the comment section, all of your usernames and our names as creators have been given handles, what they're called handles, where you get the sort of at sign before your username is there, which I do not like because it makes it feel as if uh, YouTube is part of social media. And I've always liked the fact, as somebody who loathes social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and all of that, I feel that this platform and YouTube is a world apart from all of that, but the handle affair amalgamates that feeling a little more. Do you know what I mean? Which I do not like. I do not like. Call me old fashioned. Isn't it funny, you know, when they ring in changes on any, on any of these platforms, it's easy to get one's knickers in a knot, isn't it? But I just don't like it. It sits uncomfortably with me. And as creators, we all get the opportunity to choose our own handle. And uh, unfortunately, River, because it's such a ubiquitous term and name, and I'm sure it's used on hundreds of channels, had already been snapped up. So I had to choose and select a handle for this channel. I went for River Royal. That's what it is at this moment in time. It might change in future if I decide to change it, but it's River Royal. So if you get a comment from me, it will be from the handle River Royal. It puts me off commenting, to be honest, the whole affair, because I know it will confuse a lot of my fruits. This is what annoys me. Anyway, that is what's going on with YouTube. They always shake things up when they don't really need to. You may have noticed they've changed the subscribe button from red to black. Why? Why? Very strange what goes on behind the scenes, isn't it? But I suppose we just have to embrace it and get on with it. A special shout out to all my South African fruits, because the king is hosting his first state visit and he's already welcomed the presidency of the Republic of South Africa today, celebrating enduring friendship over the next two days. Cyril was welcomed by the king and Queen Camilla. I've noticed, by the way, that a few newspapers have been dripping in Queen or Queen Camilla rather than Queen Consort, which is exactly as it should be, in which I was hoping to hear more of, especially after the coronation, when that comes around. Yes, she is the Queen Consort, but it's perfectly acceptable and should really be required in future for her to be referred to as Queen Camilla. And I have heard it popping up just a little bit here and there. So anyway, I digress. Queen Camilla was on hand, looking absolutely stunning in this brilliant blue number out of this world divine she was. And I've got to tell you, when I mentioned Cyril Ramaphosa in a previous video, a lot of my South African fruities were very disparaging about him. So I'm not sure what the general consensus is in South Africa, but a lot of my Safa fruities didn't have much good to say about him. But I'm not going to speak about that because I'm ignorant about the whole issue, to be quite honest with you. But they will be attending a state banquet this evening, so all the trimmings. I can't wait to see what Catherine's going to be wearing. But she looked absolutely beautiful today. Did you see the photographs of her in the carriage? Such a fairy tale princess. She truly is. 
the coat dress by her favourite Amelia Wickstead in purple berry with this green brooch, a Jane Taylor hat and mulberry bag. And on those delicate ears were Diana's Collingwood earrings. The Waleses were colour coordinated this time with Big Willie in a matching tie. And I thought this was a lovely little touch, a lovely little nod to our South African friends. The national flowers of South Africa have been recreated out of sugar by the kitchen at Buckingham Palace. William had a busy week, actually. You might have seen him out and about making friends, giving the kids a few hugs, which was very nice to see, in his capacity as the honorary air commander of RAF Coningsby. He visited the base to learn about future technological innovations and open a new boxing club. And as you can see, he also tried out one of those virtual reality headsets. And while he was there, someone sneakily asked him for his opinion on old Mickey Tyndall and whether he'd be voting for Mike Tyndall. And William was very diplomatic because he's got another chum in there. One of those England larnesses, Jill Scott. So he was very diplomatic and just said, that's a tricky one. I don't watch I'm a Celebrity episodes in full, but I did see the snippet where Mike was read out a letter from Zara, where Zara said that she and the children were missing his papa hugs, his papa hugs. But you know, I hear that he's done perfectly fine in there. For most people's taste, although I find it rather vulgar, some of the things that he came out with in there, but. I'm sure it won't do any major harm, just sort of chipping away ever so delicately at the veneer of royal respectability. But nothing major, nothing calamitous. Although I have to say, although people haven't found him remotely offensive or damaging in any way, I've heard whispers that people are finding him really rather bland and charmless and not a great wit. But I haven't been watching it, so I can't really offer an opinion there. Now, what is it with that ginger spice? I'm not talking about Haribo here. I'm talking about Jerry Halliwell. What is wrong with the girl? She leaps over every royal, whether they're male, female, or indeterminate. She leaps on them at every given opportunity. She leapt on Charles all those years ago, pawing and mooing him as if he wasn't a future king. And this time she pounces on Camilla and greets her as if they're sisters. <laughs> uh, which I have to say, I have to say, was lovely. It was lovely to see. As you know, I am a stick in the mud. I don't really approve of such things, but it works on two levels. It works on two levels. So I guess I'm a hypocrite, aren't I? I sit on the fence on these kind of things. You know, in my opinion, no, they shouldn't be greeting royals with such cosy familiarity in a public setting. And that's just the way I feel about it. But of course, I love to see it. It's cosy, Camilla's wonderful, receives her with grace, and it's a lovely moment. And they were surrounded at this do, it was a reception at Buckingham Palace for writing contest winners, uh, surrounded by lovely people who were so welcoming to Queen Camilla, so welcoming. It was really gorgeous to see this footage, if you've seen it. Camilla had spoken at this event, her first speech as Queen Consort, delivered immaculately. She speaks beautifully with passion and with authenticity. You know, all the past 17 years or however long it is, just gently, gently, she's been developing bit by bit, stage by stage, her confidence, her ability to get across the private charm that she's always possessed and that charisma and get it out and over in a more public facing role. So I guess slowly, drip by drip, drop by drop, I am, I wouldn't say embracing, but accepting that the new royal style is a more physical style, warm in ways that the queen was not warm, more touchy-feely. What can I say? That is the way that it's going to be. So there's no, I've got to get my head around that and I might as well learn to enjoy it. And it's worth remembering too that the Queen's reign obviously began back in the 50s and I'm not saying that there wasn't medicine and vaccines and all kinds of things but they were in uh, many of those were in more of an infancy so to speak than they are now 70 years later and they were coming from an era Victorian era they were coming from 
outwards, reaching outwards from the period of empire when these things weren't so available, when people died easily and apart from anything else. That was one of the reasons why public figures royalty didn't want to mess with the hoi polloi, you know, didn't want to be touched and felt and germified because they could drop down dead with a gasp of air, uh, let alone a touch of finger. I mean, one thinks about the thousands of hands that the king and many members of the royal family shook over the mourning period for the queen and you think how on earth, how on earth do they still live and breathe all the undesirables that they came in contact with, you know, undesirable germs I'm talking about, because the king doesn't wear gloves like the queen did. And I think they should. I think they should. I mean, I would not dip my hand into that crowd because you don't know what you're coming out with, do you, my dear? You don't know what you're bringing back with you. Fleas, lice, grime, germ, all kinds of dubious elements. But they do it. They do it unflinchingly, unfailingly. And uh, that's the way it's going to be. Camilla also met students from the Ebony Horse Club in Ascot. She was gorgeous in a huge fuzzy hat and a Sherwood Greens with those lips that remind me of Vanessa Redgrave and Julie Andrews. She's got that kind of affair going on with the lips and I love it. She's very beautiful. And she was so engaged and enthused when she was chatting with the young ones there. The Princess Royal was on official business. She was sent off, sent off to the Falkland Islands this was at the behest of His Majesty's government because she was there to meet with officials and community initiatives and also to lay a wreath in memory for the 40 year anniversary of the conflicts of 1982. Wonderful photographs of her, resplendent in regal purple. I love purple on her, I really do. She looked gorgeous. And I also loved that wooden plaque that you see, made such a nice change to the more sophisticated plaques that we see, doesn't it? This sort of homemade affair. I thought it was very charming. But a little bit more controversially, Anne was also photographed en route to a shooting party at Windsor. Controversial why? Because it wasn't just her we saw en route, it was Annie, uh, with a dog, by the way, one Anne and her dog. It was Annie. It was the Wessex clan they were seen and Guess which other sibling? Not the king. Andrew. Mm. Andrew. And the, the whispers are that Charles was dismayed to find this photo opportunity had taken place because he doesn't want Andrew associated with the family in a public manner. Uh, I hear tell that he is still to be welcomed at Sandringham for Christmas. For Christmas Day, so you know, ostensibly he is not in any way barred from those sort of uh, familial events, but it is very clear that no matter what you or the rest of the world might think of Andrew, he was very much supported by the Queen and his siblings who seemed to have every faith in him. Thank you for joining me today, my dears. It was just a little royal roundup, but I appreciate your company and I look forward to seeing you next time. Toodle pip.